I am so excited because Joe Rotella is here with bead lamp working. And you know, I took a lamp working class years ago, but it was really complicated, Joe. And there was so much setup, I couldn't imagine how I was gonna get all of that in my house. You know, I was petrified to, to even think about it, but it fascinated me. And you know, you've got a torch, you've got molten glass, but if you decide to start, a kit might be the easier way to go. It has everything you need and everything that'll work well together. You don't have to figure it out. So that's what I did. Cool, let's do it. So let's start with the beginning of the process. We're gonna start with these rods, stainless steel rods. They're called mandrel. Okay. And we actually wrap the molten glass around it. That makes the hole for the center of the bead. But the glass would stick to the metal. So we have a bead release. And to use the bead release, we just take the mandrel. I noticed you shook it up a little bit. Make too. sure it's well mixed. It should be the consistency of like buttermilk. Okay. And then we're just going to stick it in. If you have a big glop at the end, you know, you can shake that off. And just let it dry. And it's going to take two to three hours to dry, even overnight is best. So this is something you wanna do like a little time ahead before you actually wanna do any work. Absolutely, you know, and I think the key to the whole lamp working process is preparation. And this is just a piece of foam? And that's I like why it's it because it holds up? my mandrels without, mm. if they bump together, sometimes that release will crumble off. Okay. And I've laid everything out on the table. I'm wearing long pants and covered toe shoes just in case glass flies. I have my sleeves rolled up so there's nothing catching fire. There's no curtains hanging around here. And I know what I want on my left hand side because I prefer to work with my right hand. I've got everything sort just of prepped. Just in case I know you have some water, we have a fire extinguisher, we've got safety glasses. You're ready. We're ready. We're ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my safety glasses and fire up the torch. You turn it on till you hear a little hiss. Oh, I hear it. And I want about a one inch flame. Okay. Now, now when you say a one inch flame, it's the visible cone the of the blue flame, the part, blue part. The blue part. Now I want to have some thin glass to work with, and all I have is thick glass right now. And so I notice you're not wearing gloves, so you are just holding those rods with your hands because as long as it's not the part that's in the fire, it, re it remains cool to the touch. Yep, and notice that I start out here about three to four inches away from that hot flame because you can't go from cold glass to mad hot. It would shatter. Really? So we're warming it slowly, and as it's warming, I'm able to bring it about an inch away from that blue flame. And you can see now that glass is just starting to... Yeah, because I'm to... starting to see sort of an orange flame around where that glass is. And I so, notice you keep them moving constantly. In the beginning, just to heat them a little bit slowly. And then if I'm comfortable, you know, I can tell by feel, by color. Well, and of course, the heat is making the hard glass soft. Absolutely. So you can almost see when it's starting to get glossy. You see that molten color almost? Yes. But we've got to get it red, red, red hot. Now, I noticed that your torch is uh, clamped onto the table. You're working over a metal surface, not a wooden one. Absolutely. And this, again, is all part of being safe when you do this. Can you see that it's starting uh, it's to get It's literally molten? red hot. This is where red hot comes from, right? It's turning red and it's getting almost drippy, one would say. And I want a nice ball of molten glass on the end of this so rod. So you're just continuing to rotate and turn it to generate that ball. If you held it still, I assume it would just sort of plop down. It could, it could. So see the nice round shape that's it's on the beautiful. end of that? Now, sometimes pulling glass doesn't always work. Even making beads, you'll have you know wobbly ones. But to pull the glass, I'm going to actually connect the two. So you're touching the two of them, and, and you then see I'm going to slowly pull. Well, see, now I got a little too too much pulling going on there. Well, Let's I was going to say again. it's also when it's that molten and hot, it's like you need to work it slowly out of the flame also in order to get and it there. And see how we're getting that now nice Now I see because it's thread. also it's getting less red. That means it's far enough from the flame that it's cool enough that it's actually going to harden then to cut into it, that. I'm going to put it right back in the flame. You never want to pull the cold glass. So now I have a rod that's nice and cool. I'm going to put it on cool. my work surface and let's go ahead and make a bead. So this is if you wanted a thinner piece of glass as opposed to a fatter piece of glass, that is the process that you would go through. You don't need to buy thinner ones. You can make them Pull yourself. Pull your own. And so what I'm going to do now is make another bead so or ball a, of glass. So it's basically the same process for every bead. You're going to begin that heating Absolutely. and creating slowly a ball. Absolutely, slowly heating, slowly heating. And if I could ask you to hand me a mandrel, Does the it pink matter one. if it's one of the, okay, one of the pink ones and obviously those have one dried that is cured. Yep. There you and go. again, we don't want to go right to ice cold, so I'm going to heat the mandrel out here as well, just lightly. Now, can you see we're starting to get a nice ball of glass there? I do see that. 
and the mandrel is starting to get a little toasty. I want a nice ball that I will, can make all the way around that mandrel. You know, this requires a lot of ability to like pat your head and rub your stomach, right? Because so you have to have your two hands doing different I'm things. I'm going to place it on the hot mandrel and I got to get it to connect here. And I'm going to gently roll the mandrel away from me. The bee. And again, make sure you're only pulling hot glass. Because obviously anywhere that it's not that molten hot, you're going to have a lot more trouble. Now I can work this in the flame to get it a round shape, keep rotating it, rotating it, rotating it. What I'm going to do is add a second color. I'm going to use that thin the piece we one. made. And again, I want it to be a little bit hot. So you're going to keep it warming up. So this really is you have to keep both hands rotating through Moving. the flame, constantly not letting anything cool suddenly. And let's get him nice and hot again. So now obviously you can use these beads for anything you want. They can be necklaces, they can be jewelry, they can be uh, additions to a journal, they can be decorations, you can make cute little like purse embellishments. Well, you might not, but I might. You know, there are a lot of different things that you can do with personalized beads that you have created in your own colors and choices and all that kind of stuff. Now, I have a really wonky shape here that I could keep turning in the heat and it'll even itself out. Mm -hmm. Or you may like the wonky shape. There's, there's nothing wrong with a wonky shape, but do you see how it's starting to smooth out? I do see that. Now, we have tools. This is called a marver. And I can take the marver and roll the bead against it to and it get the shape. But it. as soon as it cools off, and it'll cool pretty quickly. Because obviously the marver is cold. Absolutely. In fact, you want it to be cool because hot glass will stick to hot metal. Oh, that's so that why there's cool. the bead release on that stick so that we yep. can eventually remove the bead. So, so now if I'm happy, and I can see the two colors in the flame. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And look, you've got and a bead. And I've got a bead. Now I need this to cool until it's not red hot. I okay. mean, just give it, I don't 30 know, seconds 30 seconds or seconds. so. You see Do how you want it's me to cooled? hold it for you? Well, well, I think it's cool enough now. Okay. I'm going to put it inside this fiber blanket. You can put it to bed. It's toasty. It's toasty. <laughs> now, these have been cooling, oh, several hours. And what we do is put them in water for about 15 minutes, and the bead release actually dissolves in water. You can see it. Right? That's what's right on that mandrel, and you're going to be able to pull that bead and we, right off. And in off. fact, this one just came off. Look and how look, easy is that? You made a bead. And if you need to clean any bead release out of the center, you just use a little tool. But we have a bead. That Let's was see, fantastic, Joe. That's it. Thank How you. Easy is that? It's surprisingly easy. It's fun too. It's it actually is. fun. Just it is. Get your environment set up, you're good to go.